Ladies and gentlemen, best of anime 2023. We are now in 2024. January is thankfully over. It's always the worst month, but we are here in February and it's time to talk about anime in 2023. My boy Guck dropped a fat video, fat 30 minute, big, fat, chungy, wongy video on anime in 23. I, the great Nux Pentius, will be reviewing this man's taste. I have a top five. Uh, I will tell you the top five now because I don't believe in suspense. Suspense is for bitches and people that need to generate ad revenue. In fifth place, Oshinoko. In fourth place, Eminence in Shadow Season 2. In third place, Vinland Saga Season 2. In second place, Freerun. And in first place, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. That there is the big fat ass rankings of my favorite anime in 2023. So, I had to drop all this down here so we could go through this freaking video, see what he puts at the top, see what my man thinks of. That's my top five. If he doesn't have those on here, then... Then he's objectively wrong. I don't know. This was like a close fight. I feel like every single one of these top picks are just like meme picks at this point. It's like, nah, I'd win or Aura himself. All right. Like these, <laughs> this is the Clash of the Titans. Well, it's that time again. Yeah. Another year has passed us by and with it has gone another year of anime. We got right. good shows. We got bad shows. But the real question. We did. We got both of those. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The question is, what are the moments that are going to be remembered? Dude, that was a sick moment. That moment from uh, zombie shit, that was good. Oh, bro, Attack on Titan ended. My lord. I totally forgot about that last episode of Attack on Titan that dropped somewhere over the year. The year dominated by absolute heavyweight shows just completely taking over. Anime seems inescapable whether you are a fan or not. Successful. Yo! Okay, this doesn't count. All right, this doesn't count. If this counts, wait a second. Hold on. Hold your horses. Does Wano count? Does Gear 5 Luffy count as anime in 2023? Because that was one of the most impactful moments for sure. And if he doesn't talk about it here, bro... Bro, we are cooking him in the comments. Live action adaptation. That was a joke. I don't actually have anything against him, even if he doesn't mention him. I'm just saying he deserves it. Legendary series coming to an end. Memes. So many memes. So nah, I'd win. I have no enemies, but if I did, nah, I'd win. It feels like the influence of a handful of shows have truly seeped into mainstream pop culture and only continues to grow from there. But there was. Dude, every single Gigug video has neither Fortnite or Among Us reference. It's like, man, is. He's freaking high on the Twitter memes, brother. There were some other things happening around our little sphere. Anime fans continue to find any opportunity to complain about CG. This this is the oldest news in the universe. Anime fans complaining? Entitled? No, could it be us? Time even Demon Slayer was catching strays, with viewers complaining about how these fishes look like an absolute joke. How they did kind of look like an absolute joke. Dare any animation studio consider this acceptable quality, they cried. Meanwhile, in Isekai Land. <laughs> Oh no, not this! Oh. <laughs> Look at this! Look at this this is what peaks. It's perfect. It's beautiful. Yo, this is what the shadows in solo leveling are gonna look like when we get there. GI looks like. <laughs> Togashi drew two lines and got. Oh, bro, that's true. I forgot about that. Togashi came back with like one line of on a paper. 44 million views, 400k oh, likes, and 100,000 retweets. Bro. Meanwhile, I'm out here drawing at least eight lines. That's and pretty good, dude. Not gonna lie. I'm still waiting for Shonen Jump to hit me up with that manga deal. One Piece defied all odds by giving us a live action adaptation. That was that actually didn't. great. Didn't suck. While the Jujutsu Kaisen fan base came together to collectively say, nah, I'd win. Which That's why Lobotomy Kaisen is so peak, brother. Which is what I think they say when they enter a contest of who can more effectively spoil their fucking series. Yeah, true, true. That's why I'm not part of any fandom. I am my own chaos fandom on the side. I merely watch and laugh. I guffaw at the struggles that people go through in their daily lives. I realize and recognize the fact that I cannot help you, and therefore I will laugh at your suffering. Well, they would probably win against this random dude from Marshall. Oh! <laughs> Mashal, bro. Dude, 2023 was actually kind of fire for anime. What the fuck? I am Rhodes Amos. I mean, look at him. He lost like two seconds. Who the hell would play a character like that? Probably some dumbass <laughs> hack. For real, though. It's been 10 years now since I've been doing these yearly anime. That's fucking crazy, because I remember when his anime in 2020... 
2013 drop, right? When that dropped, I was excited, okay? I was a big Gigguk fan back in 2013 when he dropped this video. I was literally so hyped. My recaps. I have got- I've been a fan of this guy for over a decade now. Do you realize this? Oh my God, I'm old. Oh my God, he's old. i through a bloody decade of anime and a lot has changed during that time. I can only imagine the wild things that were happening in 2013 back then. Hayao Miyazaki finishes his latest feature film, The Wind Rises, just before announcing his retirement from filmmaking at the ripe young age of about 197 years old. So that was a fucking lie. <laughs> He's back. Man's back 10 years later. All right. There are a lot of shows that didn't make my list this year. Not because- Whoa, you're not going to talk about Hell's Paradise? I thought Hell's Paradise wasn't like a peak, but it was pretty good. They weren't good, but because I didn't have much to say about them other than it was good. Hell's- So was Mashal. So was Undead Unlocked. You're not going to talk about Undead Unlocked? That one was awesome. I loved how it got canceled on Twitter because the main character was in- weird pervert guy like everything else that gets cancelled on twitter one day i'm sure the west will have ah, 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 ah. there's a there's a tweet that just went out this morning with like 20,000 likes and 3 million views roasting me because i know what rule 63 is i mentioned it in an offhand comment on a stream and people were just gaffaffled at my incredible based un undying amount of knowledge appreciate uma musume as much as asia does okay i have never heard of this show Today is not that day. Mishoku Tensei continued my favorite isekai story oh. of all time by having its main character go I cannot get it up. People have been trashing Rudy. Uh, something is not rising and it is the shield hero. No, that didn't work. Left, right and center, but I thought gentleman by showing that he never, ever raises his sword at a girl. All right, let's get to my favorite shows of the year. Yo, Zama 100. All right, Zama 100 is pretty good. Um, I did not get through it the whole way. I think he's, okay, so this is top 13 anime of 2023, I think his video. I don't know if Zama 100 for me would beat Hell's Paradise or Demon Slayer or Spy X Family. I'm worried he's gonna not even have those on here. 100. But he Zom better have Eminence Season 2, goddammit, because that was peak Sakai. 100 tells the sad story of Mapper employees. Overworked Damn, and undervalued bro. by the company overlords that run their lives, it takes an entire zombie apocalypse for a Akira Tender to start living the life he should have. If he mentions the breaking, the black bars, like when he starts seeing the world in saturated colors and he breaks the black bars, then, um... Uh, then we know that that we've reached peak giga. This show felt like a personal call out for anyone who's ever worked a dead end job in their lives and has daydreamed of something, anything happening to take away their responsibility out of their hands, even if that thing is the end of the world. Akira Persona- Dude, the end of the world would make my life a little more interesting, not gonna lie. Fies that feeling of pure freedom we all secretly wish we had. That feeling that breaks the shackle of responsibility of having to go to work, of having to wake up for school the next day. Aaron Yeager looks at him and goes, fuck that guy, which is embodied in one of the most impressive <laughs> opening episodes all year. Yeah, dude. That, the first episode is by far the best episode of Zama 100. Well, you could feel that every single person working on it channeled their passionate hatred of all the previous employers that had ever wronged them. Unfortunately- Dude, can you imagine who, like, how they build and, and recruited people for this project? It's like, do you hate your job? Yes. You're perfect! It felt like a lot of the hype got taken away, largely due to episode releases being plagued with constant delays because of time slots and supposed production issues. Oh hey, would you look at that? Even though the show lost some steam as it went on and was tonally a bit all over the place at times, it was still a fun little show I think anyone could enjoy. Yeah, I think the gimmick of the show and the first episode of the show carried it completely. Like, the rest, I didn't finish it, but from what I've seen, it wasn't bad. But I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't, like, special. Because in this day and age where it feels like people are fighting tooth and nail just to survive, I think a lot of us could use a story about uh, one man reminding us all how to live. Ah, uh, ah! Uh, that was cute. Not the hundred girlfriends. Not the hundred girlfriends. Why is this muted? He got copyrighted! He had to mute it because of copyright. Oh, poor guy. He's the most respected genre in anime, but this year we saw the 100 girlfriends who. Yeah. Listen, I'm not gonna lie, 100 Girlfriends was based. It was fucking good. Like, listen, listen. It, it's, it's the freaking Giga Chad of Giga Chads. It is absolute peak harem. <laughs> Love you, come along, and personally made sure that it never will be. <laughs> this is the story of a man who got rejected so many times, oh, who yeah. had such negative riz. God took pity and gave him a hundred different girls he had to date or they'd all die. This all right, you, you, you phrased that in a very strange way, but he's not wrong. This is like watching someone dying of thirst in the desert, and then yes. God goes, All right, I've got a solution. You must drink a hundred camels worth of water. Listening? Just fucking drown him. 
But what God didn't plan right. for is that he chose someone who could chug the ocean dry and still have room for more. When Dude, man is such a freaking Giga Chad. Dude is the actual Riz God of anime. God the ultimate pimp and him the ultimate Riz God. This is the relationship between Andrew Tate and the people in his Hustlers University. Trafficking a hundred helpless women that are hell bent. Having no option in their life other than being in love with him because God just decided that was the case. Girlfriends has a concept so dumb it will need to be as batshit crazy as its own premise to even have a chance at making it work. And that's exactly why it I just saw like 30 boobs. Different ones. That was horrifying. It's stupid. It's unhinged. It knows exactly how insane it is and then runs with it 10 kilometers past where it needed to go. By all means, this show shouldn't have worked if we didn't have the greatest harem protagonist to bring it oh, all together. Oh yeah! He looks like such a nerd, such a loser. But he is the Riz God of anime. Yes. Dude, just, did you see this? This is, this is bring it blocking on the next level. It's all together. He, he goes for the, for the boss. Bam, look at that. Look at this man. He just blocked his grope with his face. God, what a legend. Yes, we were Grace with the apex so of boy- Riz Pentius, I'm just saying. Friends, the partner she tells you not to worry about. He may look like the most unthreatening guy possible, but watch him be like, don't worry, I come in peace. Hi, what's your name? Peace. It's rare for me <laughs> to laugh at a comedy anime and even rarer when it comes to lowbrow harem rom-coms. Oh, dude, this is the lowest of brows. It's amazing. I, again, I think that the reason why this show is so good is because of how self-aware it is. Like, it knows 100% exactly what it is. This shows up on the scene, dude with 100 girlfriends in his harem. God decided so they have no choice but to be anywhere else. Bro's out here with, with one dick and 100 women. And uh, he literally gives them all the best life. Like, this is the ultimate, the ultimate polygamy propaganda anime. I don't know how they thought of this. And, but again, if they would have just made this like some sort of weird self insert shit, it would have been mega cringe. But it's the fact that they literally went the next level, the next freaking level. And they made him so self aware of what was going on. It just turned this anime into peak. What Konosuba is to Isekai is what this anime, The 100 Girlfriends That Love You, is to the harem genre. So 100 Girlfriends was a showcase of how to do a parody correctly. Yeah. Reinforced by Bibri Animation Studio doing a bang up job selling all of these jokes in the anime adaptation. They went above and beyond and I can't wait to see how they adapt the manga beyond the- Whoa, whoa, wait, what, what, why are you all running away? Oh, no way, bro. <laughs> what is this page, dude? Oh my god, bro. It's Jover! It's Jover! Oh, Alright, what do we got? What do we got? What's next? I always feel- I'm always scared to watch, like, new adaptations of stuff that I really love. Like, I'm really attached to the 1997 Trigun, and I was just kind of scared to try this one. In the minds of anime fans, 3D animation comes in oh, two no. tiers. Oh, There's the Berserk 2016 oh. tier, a show so disastrous ah. that has scarred the anime community from 3D anime to this day. And then there's this, the aesthetic that looks like one of those games I apparently won't last five seconds playing. Although, let's not forget the fact that uh, I have seen some really fantastic uh, Tifa hentai playing lately. It was it was fantastic, just some, some 3D Tifa hentai that was like, it was a level of quality so good, literally everyone in the Italian set it sent that watched it with me was also really excited. The real ones know though that Studio Orange has been out here creating their own tier. Every project they seem to continually push themselves, one up themselves. Yeah, Beastars look good. And Trigun Stampede is their best looking show. Oh, it actually just... isn't garbage, Nani? With some of the jaw dropping action sequences. And... Uh, the, Asal the Italian Senate came together for once. Okay, nah, I'd come. Nah, I'd win. Nah, I'd come. And camera work, but small mic- Nah, I'd take the bad shots. For expressions and camera animation, they give that work just a bit more life. They are still continuing to push the boundary of what is possible in a 3D anime in every way possible. When I got the lucky opportunity to talk to a producer at Studio Orange, he called themselves the hentai of the anime industry. But this guy doesn't get cancelled on Twitter. I say rule 63, 4 million views later. And, well, that's pretty accurate because what they've done with Trigun Stampede has got me bricked up. Alright, but how's the show?
Trigon is one of the most beloved- What was that transition? ...loved anime from the old school Adult Swim era, and when you take on the mantle of rebooting a franchise like this, you always have to contend with picky fans comparing each and every little change in detail. That's me, I'm the picky fans, and that's why I didn't watch it, I was just scared. Well, Vash's bounty is way smaller, he has a different haircut, different gun, character designs that looked like this, now look like this. Huh, now where have I seen this aesthetic before? Oh. No! The spaghetti western feel takes a back seat to fully flesh out a hard sci-fi story. It's more dark, more gritty. One of my favorite things from the original being Vash and Wolfwood's epic buddy cop dynamic feels a tad more intense. I'll skin you alive and play with your bones until you're begging to die. Oh, what the fuck? I'm pretty sure they, they, they fucked in the original Trigon. I'm just saying. Maybe that was my headcanon, but dude, those guys were raw dogging it every episode. You got that straight. Straight? <laughs> Couldn't be me! Wolfwood. Make no mistake, this is an entirely new Trigun, but one thing I can always respect is when a reboot tries to do something different that the original didn't already do, and by the end of the season, it becomes abundantly yeah, clear what that. all these changes were leading up to, and god damn did it leave me wanting more. In I'm so happy that it ended up good, maybe I'll actually watch this one, that's awesome. Time where I feel like we're getting starved of good, hard science fiction anime, this has to be one of the most unique and interesting sci-fi worlds we've seen in years, and okay. I honestly think the way things are set up, it has the chance to do even more than the original did if it dude i was just so terrified to watch it just because i love the original so much that's always me i never watch remakes because i'm always scared he gets future seasons when people remember trigon they say oh yeah trigon i freaking loved trigon but if you ask them before that what they recommended we go back and watch cowboy bebop full metal alchemist trigon has always been on that second or third echelon of recommendations i have always recommended trigon above cowboy bebop i to this day say that trigon was superior to cowboy bebop behind the classics and i fully believe that with what studio orange have set up with this season it has the potential to go up to this tier <laughs> Nice. Good reference. All right, what do we got? What do we got? 10th place. Let's go. Let's go. He still didn't list my top five yet of the year, well, by the way. 2023, I had a top year. A uh, top five. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Free Rin, Vinland Saga, Eminent Season 2, Oshinoko. If all, f if none, if even one of these five are not in his top 10, we are boycotting this man. There it is, baby! We made it! Alright, Oshinoko. Alright, we're in. We're in this. We are so here. ...to anime last year that exploded onto the scene as fast as Oshinoko. I can't believe it's in 10th place. What? Noko did. Our hearts were torn to shred in a tragic 90-minute opening episode. A new meta was formed as anime companies saw the feature-length opening premiere and said, Wait, you can We can do double that? that! And then they dropped a feature-length movie! <laughs> It's free real estate. The opening song became the very first Japanese song to top the global Billboard 100 charts. Yo, that's pretty exciting. So you mean that the opening song to Oshinoko did as well as the, the new Ben Shapiro rap that came <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> People of my anime list came together and went, Fuck you, Fullmetal Alchemist! For about 24 hours. This is the greatest anime ever made. For about 24 hours. And then the FMA guys got almost as butthurt as when interspecies reviewers truly topped the charts. It, then, everyone remembered there was an entire rest of the show you needed to watch. This oh, oh, it wasn't just one episode? The problem plot of Oshinoko is like, alright, so there's a doctor who's a huge fan of this one idol, then and it there's turns this out other silly girl who like, shows up in the hospital, but then, but then it turns out he gets reborn as that person. I'm like, really glad he's covering it this way, uh, because actually trying to get someone to watch this show is a, is a massive, massive hurdle. Despite it actually being fire, Oshinoko is fire, you cannot get people to watch this. I have told people to watch this show, and all of them, literally all of them, message me about 20 minutes into it, and they're like, mm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not finishing this episode. Like, when you introduce this show, you have to be like, you have to watch this show, watch the entire first episode. You have to promise you are committed to watching the whole first episode. If you are not committed to that, don't try it. You don't have the balls. It's an idol anime? No. Sometimes Oshinoko is a victim of his own insane premise. Like, I don't even know if I fully understand this main character. A grown-ass, idol-obsessed man who gets reincarnated as the son of the girl he idolized and- Dude just made a whole gimmick about it who's not gonna explain the plot and then he just goes and explains the plot. Dude, what was- what was this for? There's a doctor who's a huge fan of this one idol and it turns out the idol he likes shows up in the hospital but then 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So had this whole gimmick over here. Yeah, baby, he's he's like, like, and then you just explained the plot anyway. Oh my god, dude, no. Mom and any other girl who even remotely reminds him of her. Like, if I call him a motherfucker, is he more likely to say fuck you or yes, please? Here's a feed of Sigmund Damn. Freud's grave right now. But behind all that, the show shines as this interesting, no bullshit Instagram filters off look at the Japanese entertainment industry, showing you what really happens behind those closed doors. You know what's kind of scary though? Every fucked up thing that happens in Oshinoko is a hundred times more believable than the Rushia Mafu Mafu drama that happened literally this week. It, go it really goes to show because somehow reality is always weirder than fiction. I hate the media! This was the show that tricked everyone into thinking they were watching another idol anime, when in reality it was almost the complete opposite. Oh, yeah. And the real ones know the true thing, single-handedly elevating the reputation of idol fans in 2023, is the sheer existence of Aoi Toto. Oh, thousand percent, bro. Toto, absolute god. Love that man. Love him. With how popular this got, I find it interesting how much I heard this title being thrown around last year, when most people saying it probably didn't even know what an Oshinoko is. See, in Japanese, Oshi means a person who I support, and in idol culture is normally used to refer to someone's favorite idol. <laughs> Dude, whoever edited this freaking based. So the term Oshinoko has a clever double- It's like, if you don't care, just watch the freaking jetpack joyride freaking subway surfers on the bottom. Dude, this is how Logan Paul watched Oppenheimer. Meaning that could be my favorite idol or my idol's children, which both perfectly describe the show. Basically, what I'm trying to say is Oshis are worshipped in idol fandom in the same way that Taylor Swift has become the Jesus for white women. All right, bro, we still have a top four. We still have a top four. Come on, come on, we need my top four on here. Eminence, bro, Vinland. Come on, Vinland, Eminence, JJK, Freerin. It's Eminence! I am a top I orgasm every time I see that. Dude, my pants are- My pants do not stay dry, brother. They do not stay dry. <laughs> Saying you're- This- this, somehow season two was better than season one. I don't know how they did it, but it was. We all do, boss. All right, dude. Fan of Isekai feels a bit like saying you're a fan of British food. People. I am insulted. Saying you're a fan of Isekai means you're cool and based, and you might be neurodivergent. Say you're a fan of British food means that you're indoctrinated and a slave to society. I think you're consuming the most bland, tasteless piece of garbage the world has ever seen. True, but sometimes true. I have a friend come visit and they have a taste of a proper full English breakfast, a perfectly cooked Sunday roast. They try some of our Cornish pasties, our crisps, and it's like, damn, this is pretty good actually. Is he joking? Like, is this propaganda? Am I literally watching propaganda right now? That is my eminence in shadow. This- I am so mad at this analogy. This is the worst analogy I've ever seen in my entire life. Dude, <laughs> Eminence in Shadow is awesome, okay? It is unironically, with no rhetoric, it is awesome. It takes every single trashy, cliche tropes you scoff at in Isekai and wears it like a badge of honor. Oh, Edgy yeah. main character, an army of girls in his oh, harem, yeah. oh, blatant yeah. power fantasy. Dude, bro, bro, Dick Master wishes he was freaking Eminence in Shadow. Dude, you have Adam, all right? Dude, Dick Master, he wishes he was eminence in shadow nonsensical plot lines cheesy dialogue dude i love the plot line so much dude it's season two the first arc the way he just skips to the end boss right away oh my lord he becomes so powerful and his organization becomes so strong taking over the world that it's like almost becoming not fun <laughs> so he becomes his own arch nemesis he puts a mask on and becomes a rival to his entire organization and literally destroys the economy for the meme. Work, but it wears it all so proudly, you start getting convinced that it's actually cool. It's not that it isn't stupid. It is stupid. How fucking dare you? It is cool. I, 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 embracing stupidity is epicness. Embracing cringe is badass. This is my mantra, and I will stand by it. It doesn't give a fuck if you care or not. Oh, I thought yeah. this would eventually run. You see, here's the thing. He's not doing this for you. He's doing this for himself. This is definitely Adam's favorite anime. On its course, until I oh, kept yeah. watching and realized that this has a more interesting plot and better world building than 90% of isekai out there. So I did a uh, over an hour long analysis on this show, okay? It's on my second channel, you probably didn't see it. It has like 200,000 views, I don't know. You, you probably didn't see it, but I did an hour long breakdown on this show. If you took the main cow character, you know, uh, Sid, the incredibly overpowered dude, if you take him out, then this story is just a brilliant geopolitical fantasy. 
It is a geopolitical story that is so freaking good and with characters that all have massive tropes with different plot lines and different threats, different incredible strategies that different characters and factions need to do. Now, imagine a world that's super duper well thought out. Bro, it's literally Game of Thrones, but they dropped in One Punch Man, okay? That is what you are watching right now. You are watching Game of Thrones with One Punch Man getting isekai in there. And it's incredible. Which actually says less than you think. For as self-aware as it is, it spares no expense oh, in building up bro. this fully fleshed out world with so many moving parts. Oh, yeah. Every new arc, you see the dominoes being perfectly laid out. And it what's crazy is every arc does, isn't just good for itself, but every single arc introduces like, let's say 10 characters, okay? And then like three of those 10 characters will end up dying. But the other seven characters all get fleshed out in future arcs. It's all set up for Sid to come in and topple them on the biggest stage possible. And even though you know it's happening, when the moment comes, comes it delivers every okay. time this was the most fun i had with any show all year oh, just yes. when i think the plot has nowhere else yes! to go season two ends with a world shaking development that made me go fuck why aren't more isekai doing this i guess <laughs> what i'm trying to say is i really miss greg's get out of here bro Dude, I just, I totally forgot Attack on Titan even was a thing this year because I finished reading it years ago. But yeah, yeah, can't lie that the end of Attack on Titan was great. And, and they actually fixed the Armin dialogue. Thank God, dude. Better than the manga. Let's go. One man's freedom is another man's genocide. Eren Jaeger, probably. <laughs> Attack probably. on Titan ended this yeah. year and the internet had... Opinions. If you only browse Twitter, you might have thought half the people either think this was a masterpiece ending, no flaws, 10 out of 10, we all won, we all lost. Eren is a bird. Or the sending ruined the series, ruined the characters, made the entire show pointless, spat on the legacy of everything he had done, no one's gonna remember Attack on Titan now. Eren is a bird. That's Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. One of two opinions, and none of them are correct. Let's go. Today, we're gonna talk about how to stop smoking crack. Now with real people Ooh. I've actually talked to, the consensus seems to be that this was a satisfying conclusion that did everything it needed to do. I had my slight nitpicks with the execution of this ending, but absolutely none of it took away from my love for this series as a whole. What Attack on R. Titan R. has dude. achieved and the impact it's had on the- But Attack on Titan was more than just that. It was a fantastic show. It was a classic anime that I think will be remembered for a very, very long time as a truly wonderful piece of art. Like just by its own metrics, having nothing to do with its actual impact, it is glorious. And I'm very, very happy with it. It's something that will go down in history as one of the defining shows of this era. This might not be my favorite ending of all time, but it is certainly the ending to one of my favorite anime of all time. Let's so go, for one dude. And also, at least it ended. Dude, at least it ended. Massive dub. Massive dub. Last time, thank you. Attack on Titan. Aww. Only those around now will know that feeling of after years of waiting through final seasons of final parts of final episodes. I still remember the five year break between season one and season two. And then there's another five year span between Attack on Titan final season part three part two and, and Attack on Titan final season part three part two final part. 2023 was that time we could definitively say that this was the final bit of Attack on Titan we'll ever get to sell. Oh, God damn it. Sometimes you just need a- I didn't watch this one. I didn't even know this existed, nani. Dose of wholesomeness to brighten up your day. But being a dude watching anime can- This is why we love Giguk. This is why we love Giguk. Sometimes feel like- Every So anime you've been watching? Oh, I'm watching this anime called Skip and Loafer and it's just one of the most cute and adorable- hey, 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 hey. Yo, you catch the latest episode of Jujutsu Kaisen at all? There was nothing. <laughs> Two types of people. Am I right? In 2023, that made me come out of every episode feeling as good as Skip and Loafer did. This shit was a weekly uh. injection of sunshine into my veins. I mean, just look at this opening alone. The colors, the vibes, the catchy song, this goddamn dance. It's enough to make any grown ass man internally scream, Ah! This is so cute! Gay, 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 gay. Fuck yeah, violence, am I right, lads? Skip and Loafer is about as straightforward as you can get. A country bumpkin moves to the big Are city- This is wild, bro. How have I never heard of this show? And it's his seventh favorite in this year. Now, just to her new high school life, it doesn't need any complex plot because it exudes this air of authenticity that makes you feel so goddamn good. This is why I like Gigak videos, because he just said nothing. He is managing to get across the, the freaking vibe. He gets the vibe of the show across in the way he's describing it, but he literally just said nothing. The authenticity and the true meaning behind the simple actions that they take makes you feel like you are understanding their truly mundane and boring motherfucking life. Their life is 
pathetically boring, and yet it is soothing in its boringness. Its mundanity exudes the most boring levels of mundane lifestyles that that makes you feel like you are living the boring, mundane life. And you're like, yes, Bo fucking knows what he's saying. Gigguk is he's cooking, man. As genuine as this one, because yeah, I said authentic, he said genuine. It was fucking close. When I say high school life, I don't mean your typical cutesy anime high schoolers that are like. <laughs> No, I mean high school life the way real high school was. You make you feel like you are back in high school. It's like a trip back in time into the mundane, boring ass fucking <laughs> high school. These are teenagers. Real teenagers. Just enjoying their lives to the fullest. No melodrama, no overly anime bullshit. This is youth and adolescence at its most pure without feeling like it's been put through some moe anime filter. And there's just something so endearing about that. But Giga, come an adult. Why would I be interested in teenagers? Look, as a certified man, wait, that line sounded really wrong. Look, as a certified man baby pretending to be a grown up, let Let's me tell go, you, dude. adulting sucks. We have jobs. Cringe, adulting is awesome. I just have to say, I am really in love with my life right now. <laughs> It's not easy to be as in love with your life as I am. Oh, Lord. Life is so fucking good. We have responsibilities. We have goddamn taxes. Sometimes you yearn for a time when life was simpler and more straightforward, and maybe that time is romanticized. Maybe you're looking back at that time through rose-tinted glasses. But whether you are or you aren't, you'll never know, because we'll never be able to get that time back True. again. Ever. And it's those little moments, those simple times you cherish and reminisce about, that this show encapsulates perfectly. Like, there's this one scene where our main right, girl dude, comes I home for the first time during her summer break. She stayed up way too late catching up with her friends and slept in, but it's alright. Her mum's taken the day off and she has the whole summer ahead of her. So on this boiling hot day, her mum slices her up a watermelon and the episode slows down to a crawl as we see her just taking a moment to enjoy this watermelon while the sounds of summer ring on in the background and she just stops and just appreciates. Bro, my ADD could not fucking ever let me sit through this shit. Bro, give me the lobotomy, Kaisen. Give me some nah, I'd win, bro. <clears throat> and just like that, her summer was over. Alright, we all knew it was here, bro. We all knew this was coming. When anime wants you to feel I lied. sad, it goes... <laughs> True. True, true. When Ami wants you to know one of its characters is crazy, it goes. <laughs> when anime is trying to hint at something important, it's like. <laughs> Yo! True, true. Anime is using a chainsaw to dice an onion, but what happens when a show comes along that treats you like you have the IQ that Rick and Morty fans say they do? I don't know, I feel like that, I, I feel, I feel like I caught a stray right there. You get Heavenly Delusion. Here is a show that doesn't take- I heard fantastic things about Heavenly Delusion, by the way. I never actually watched it. I heard amazing things about it. It is definitely on my list. You by the hand and leads you, but leaves you to discover the story on your own. It drops you into this insane world, gives you a hand-drawn scribble of a map, and says, figure it out yourself. It's episode one. Boom, we see a duo exploring a ruined Tokyo that gets in some kind of altercation with okay. some bandits. All right, you get the idea. It's some post-apocalyptic world. People are fighting for survival. Oh, and uh would you look at that oh i am and i like what i see what are you bro no not the dub no the lady's doing you're praying this doesn't have the ugly bastard tag on it the girl brings out a gun that looks <laughs> like this and immediately that? gears start turning wait is this some sci-fi world shit or is that a damn fisher price toy you think the bandits start attacking anyway and they fight back so you're like oh okay maybe she was just bluffing so this is just a normal world after all <laughs> Oh, that's a gun gun. In a single scene, the show has set up its world. Got Yo, cool as that is so freaking. I'm gonna watch the show for sure. I heard such good things about Heavenly Delusion. I never managed to get on the train, but I've only heard good things. But you asking questions, played with your expectations, answered your question, left you needing more answers, all without directly telling you a goddamn thing. This is Heavenly Delusion for all 13 episodes. This had one of the most intriguing worlds of any show this year, Yo. but trusted you to piece everything together Yo. yourself. There is no wasted scene, no I love out of character this. moment. Huh? Everything is a possible puzzle piece that- Man, I love world building in general, so this is like right up my alley. Never holds your hand, bro. I want my anime to look like a YouTube goddamn thumbnail. If it doesn't look like a YouTube thumbnail, I ain't watching that. No, I'm joking. This looks awesome. Clues you into the bigger picture. What happened to this world? Why are there nightmarish creatures that are eating people? What kind of- uh, It's a metaphor for- 
first semen. Sick experimentations is going on behind the scenes. Were you paying attention even now? Cause you just saw a random drawing of a fish with legs that looks oddly like this horrific thing and the- Yeah, I did notice that. Didn't you just show those clips side by side on purpose? Real question is, did you see a connection without me saying anything? Yes. Only by watching intently do you realize how many crumbs are hidden in- You get given enough to get a rough idea, but never enough to see the full picture. And it's that unknown- Just saying, he's playing Made in Abyss soundtrack in the background. And if he didn't sell me on watching this until now, now he did. Because Made in Abyss, top five anime of all time. That makes this world as intriguing as it is goddamn terrifying. By the end, we've only just seen a slice of the larger whole, but it's so refreshing to see an anime that will have your neurons firing in a way where you don't have to worry about watching with headphones on for once. So Oh! You know, most of the time. Listen, in the every, every, listen, listen, every horror mystery post-apocalyptic world needs a cute anime scream or two. I'm just saying. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, oh, oh my God, dude, poor guy got copyrighted on this too. He had to mute it again. Oh, man, this is why I never use anime music. It's like he put so much work into this video. You upload it. Nothing happens. It's all good. You make it public. Copyright claims. And I don't want to watch these Chinese cartoons, but in 2023, anime went, all right, but what if we had Chinese cartoons? Oh? Japan. Oh, the Apothecary Diaries. I heard good things about this as well. I didn't actually watch it. Apothecary Diaries is an anime that takes place in ancient China, not China, in a palace setting that Makes immediately sense. reminded me of these badly dubbed- My Chi favorite part about China recently has been, um, the, the three fates that you got for the Genshin Lunar New Year award that caused probably one of the biggest freaking <laughs> Genshin wars in the history of time. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> my favorite part about China is, is the Genshin gambling, just saying. Chinese soap operas I sometimes walk into my mom watching as a kid. At the beginning, I didn't fully realize what the big hook of this show was. Was it the House MD style medical detective stories? Was it the historical drama surrounding the palace politics? Yes. But on top of that, it has, <laughs> simply put, the- So many options! It could have been any of these things! It was this one! The best female character we could find all year. Oh, and sometimes- Oh, oh, even in a year with free rin, bro? That's all it takes. For far too long, anime seems to think we want only one thing, and it's this. No. I was about to say also, ugh, fuck boobs. I hate them. How about nothing Next. more than just a well-written, believable, compelling female protagonist? Hey, 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 hey. And this. Mau Mau is a character that deserves to be in the running for one of the best protagonists we saw in 2023, and was such a breath of fresh air to see. Her presence was overpowering without conforming to what a lot of shows seem to think a good female character is. Okay. It's not that she's not like other girls, or premium waifu bait, or a strong female character trademark. Bro, I cannot believe Giguk is so anti-woke. He's joined the anti I woke side of the force. Giga collab with the quartering when? Other girls or premium waifu bait or a strong she's just a girl. A well-written, believable one that doesn't forget that she's a person first. That's kind of crazy, because, like, if women would be real, they would be like her, which is really, really cool. Like, I'm glad we're getting a perspective of what women would be like if women were actually real. For being just another girl. She doesn't have to be unfeminine to find the overly flirtatious attitude of some pretty boy unappealing. She cannot be your typical waifu bait and still absolutely slay when she needs to. Yes! She's not strong because she can beat up a hundred guys, but because she's headstrong in her own values and beliefs. Here is a clever realist to ignore this looks pretty fire too, I'm not gonna lie. I can't believe I would I watched this. So a place in the palace hierarchy, but isn't afraid to throw hands when shit needs to get done. <laughs> Yo! Listen, I have a really hot take that uh, I know a lot of people are gonna hate on this take. Uh, I've actually, I was talking to this. Uh, I was talking to someone about this and um, they actually agree with me, but women, women are people too. I know I'm gonna get so canceled for that one also, but like uh, it's, a, it's a really hot take of mine that uh, I feel like it, I feel like it's important to mention and, and reiterate every once in a while, like women, women are people too. And um, like, I, I think it's been, it's been far too long that, that people are too scared to mention that fact. I go just factory reset that bitch. Seeing Mau Mau passionately solve these medical mysteries while asserting her fucking dominance all over the palace yes. politics made this such a compelling watch. Hopefully more shows will be able to take notes of great characters like this. Put your balls in his mouth, bitch. Sorry, that was, that was rude, but uh, that looks fire. Pothecary Diaries looks good. I'm gonna probably pick that up at some point as well. That looks really nice. All right, let's see it, let's see it. What? I, I didn't even know this was a thing either, Nani! 
Appreciating the statue of David up close. Getting what? to see Lionel Messi dribble past five players. Watching Jack Nicholson Who? command every scene he's in. Who? It doesn't matter what the subject matter is. It's always enthralling to see an absolute master of their craft at work. And that's the exact feeling I get whenever I get to see anything written by Naoki Urasawa. And Pluto was absolutely no exception. Dude, can you explain to me how I'd never even heard of this? He just did three anime back to back to back that I literally never heard of in my life. I once created a robot that was perfect. Keith Davids? It is! It literally is! He's in everything! <laughs> I cannot believe it, bro! He's in everything! He's everywhere! Oh my god, dude! That's insane! He is literally in everything! He's in Hasbin, he's in Rick and Morty, he's in Pluto, goddammit! Every time I hear his voice, it just makes I think of the president all over again. The robot world has ever seen. There are only a few mangaka that can boast such a legendary status as Urasawa himself, when you have a track record of titles like Monster, an absolute oh, masterpiece- Okay, I knew I recognized that art style, alright. He's with arguably the greatest villain anime has seen. 20th Century Boys, not just my favorite manga of all time, but one of my favorite pieces of fiction to exist. Damn, Who okay, I need to read that manga, Nani. So is meant to be one of his weaker works, according to diehard fans. And goddamn, if this is him operating at his lowest potential, this is like sending in your weakest fighter, and that fighter turns out to be Gojo fucking Satoru and wait. Yeah, that analogy checks out. This has all the calling cards of a classic Urasawa tale. He sets the stage, a sci-fi world where humans and robots coexist, a series of unsolved murders, a detective that is missing part of his memories, a robot that has done the impossible and taken a human life. He hooks you into his world and leaves you with a single question when the first episode ends. Just how deep does this rabbit hole go? Okay, man, I cannot believe it, bro. Giga, I've been sitting here, okay, watching a lot of good shit, all right? I, I have good shit to watch. I am a busy freaking man. You did not just put me on Heavenly Delusion, Apothecary Diaries, and Pluto back to back to back. The man's ability to construct a mystery and captivate an audience through his mastery of suspense, to me, has the same level of craftsmanship as seeing a master blacksmith make a legendary sword. Every Gigak, with all due respect, when is the last time you watched a master craftsmith craft a legendary sword? Alright, with all due fucking respect, bitch. <laughs> Alright, look out. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you saying? Yeah, right, right, right. That reminds me of the time a samurai blocked bullets with his katana. Mm, yeah, sure. Every episode is so dense nah, I'd win. with emotion. A plot that will keep you guessing through all the twists and turns, sitting on top of the sheer thematic depth of the story that every single character carries on their back. Bro, but g g this man actually watches every anime ever. I love him so much. Giga, you're doing God's work, homie. At the end of it all, he'll leave you with these ideas that you'll be thinking about far after the credits roll. This- Giga, next time you're gonna do like a top anime of thing, all right? Give me like the list of the four anime I never heard of so I can watch them first, please. Thank you. Is some of the final of storytelling you can find anywhere. If I had to make a guess why this didn't make as big of an impact as it probably should have, well this was an adaptation of a sci-fi manga that was written 20 years ago that was Whoa. originally a reimagining of Astro Boy, what? a manga that came out 60 years ago. So inevitably, there might Damn, be some okay. aspects that feel a bit dated. What's this? A war involving the invasion of some Middle Eastern country predicated on the possible developments of robots of mass destruction? Hmm. Oh hey, there's a guy <laughs> called Adolf. <clears throat> Ah! I couldn't agree with you more, my dear Adolf. But a Ooh, I see, I see! Ah, I sense a, I sense a... I can smell a little bit of a... Prejudice in the air! Along with a slightly lukewarm ending, this doesn't take away from the legacy of one of the greatest mangakas alive right now. Right. So, I have one question left. Are we ready to attempt a 20th Century Boys anime? Alright, there's three left. What could it be? Alright, so Freerun is definitely there. It has to be Free Rin Jujutsu Kaisen and Vinland Saga, right? I'm ready. Domain expansion. There it is, the Jujutsu Kaisen. What did I tell you? All right, and then the next one, it has to be Vinland Saga and Free Rin. That has to be the top three. <laughs> Favorite part about this uh, season two is the fact that no main characters died. They all managed to to just barely survive it. It's just that that wholesome ending of how like all the main characters managed to get out of there alive. Like shout out to Jujutsu Kaisen for managing to pull that off.
When you watch an action anime, you normally go through a season where you might see a ton of great action, but you know it all builds up to this one, or at most two episodes, where the production <laughs> values skyrocket, and you treat it to this insane- Now this time, bitch, everything looks beautiful. Mainly animated fight that will drop your jaw to the floor. Hello, animator. I would like to abuse you into using your entire 100% of your ability in animating this for crunch time. Uh, why are you abusing me, sir? Because I am abusing all of the animators! <laughs> it is I, Nux Pentius, domain expansion, sex with everyone! These are the scenes that everyone oh remembers God. and defines the top fights of the year. Jujutsu Kaisen went, how about we do that? Every single episode. For every single episode. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't think I've ever quite experienced the collective adrenaline filled ride Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 has given me. So, remember how I, d I described Eminence and Shadows? Like, you know the nut is coming. Like, you literally know you are about to burst, all right? And then you burst and it's glorious. That was my uh, analogy for Eminence and Shadow. And by the way, it was a great analogy. Fuck you. My analogy for Jujutsu Kaisen is like, it's like that exactly, except you took way too much Viagra. So, you just keep nutting. It's like, you know you're about to nut and you nut, but then you nut again and again and again and you just keep nutting it's a fountain it doesn't stop bro and timelines you're in all of your progeny died before you Th that is the analogy all right let's let's just i need to give something to the twitter freaks to cancel me for I'm a little nervous they're gonna run out of material soon uh, unfortunately they only got twenty thousand likes on their latest call out post that i knew what rule 63 is and like i don't want them to, i don't want them to go dry you know what i'm saying watching some of the sickest shit that's ever been put on screen and you think to yourself there's no way they could ever top this and it's at that moment the show will look you dead in the eye and go i'll fucking do it again yes, and then it does again and again and nah. again now nah, I'd abuse my animators. Now nah, I'd take the back shots. Now nah, I'd win. And again and again and again. So many amazing moments. So many sick ass scenes. Midway through the season, the hype got to me, and I excitedly tweeted out, "It should be goddamn illegal for an anime to go this hard." That was the same day all this came out. One of the biggest talking points. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, you can't talk about Jujutsu Kaisen's quality without talking about the controversy. I feel like so there's been map. Well, one complaint that I have about the community, and this is a complaint I have with a lot of communities in like the anime industry and in general, in like TV shows and fictional um, content and media in general. It's like people are going to talk about the controversy, people are going to talk about the quality, people are going to talk about stuff, but no one actually gets into the gritty and talks about the writing or why the Shibuya arc is like why the Shibuya incident hit so fucking hard. Everyone's so busy talking about how it looks gorgeous and how it was a, a tragic slave labor in the freaking uh, in the in the Mappa headquarters, and no one actually talks about the piece of art in front of us treatment of their animators during the season and i think it's a testament to the blood sweat and tears poured into this and semen lots of that that we got a product this fantastic despite the hellish working conditions they were going through demon slayer mob psycho this may not have gotten the opportunity to be as polished as shows like that but it is unmatched when it comes to its raw stylistic flair oh, every yeah. single fight has it's a unique beautiful. identity not constrained to one genre of action we got gritty hand-to-hand -hand combat city-wide disaster level brawls insanely unique powers idol dance beatdowns there was a fight a fight Fucking mecha fight in a shonen anime. The amount of hype, the amount of fucking sheer dis- Yeah, that mecha did a lot though. Like, I'm so happy that the mecha actually d uh, pulled its weight and obliterated all their enemies. That was pretty awesome. Remember when the mecha actually succeeded in doing so much for the plot? Respect. We got fucking rabbits throwing hands. This Yo! <laughs> the rabbit nunchucks! No! One of the greatest showcases I've ever no! seen. <laughs> That was insane, bro. Oh my, and what's so wild is so many characters just shown from Toji to Sukuna to to my goat, go Joe Goat, my man, my absolute king, Joe Goat, getting the love he deserves. Dude, check this out. Check, you're not ready. You are not ready. So check this out. So over here, if you simply look up Joe Goat, okay, he has his own little wiki article over here. See, Joe Goat is a character from the Joe Goat Kaisen series. He's the strongest cursed spirit. All right, so he would win against Goku. His name is Joe Goat. All right, his age is this. Um, special grade cursed spirit. Like Joe Goat has his own wiki. Speaking of, for lack of a better term. Fucking cool shit. Yeah. This felt like the pure cell. Can we just take a moment to understand Giguk over here for just a second? I, I really hate to do this yap a little bit, but let's be real. Giguk described the high school life show. He spent five minutes defining in a world of mundane boringness and boring mundanity, where you could just believe and dwell in its authentic perseverance of the high school life, truly exuding every ounce of the spirit you've been missing. He was talking about people in high school doing nothing, all right? Now he talks about Jujutsu Kaisen, and he says he's like, like a scene of, for lack of a better term, fucking cool shit. Ab 
absolute whiplash. <laughs> he, was, he was talking about the, the high school one for like 20, He was so eloquent. Then he gets his Jujutsu Kaisen. He's like, oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, bro. It's like, it's fucking awesome. This felt like the purest celebration of fight scenes and choreography. We were in the audience. They got to marvel at a symphony of some of the coolest set pieces you can find in them. And also characters. Peak character writing. The Shibuya arc may not have been peak storytelling or the peak of all shonen arcs, but right now, this is the peak of action spectacle. <laughs> <laughs> so terrifying. Sukuna, what an actual legend. All right. Top two, again, we're still calling it. It has to be Vinland Saga and Freerun, right? There's no way it's not Vinland Saga and Freerun. Let's see it, Vinland Saga. The way elves see this world. It's Freerun, all right. Then the last one is gonna be Vinland Saga. World is a mystery. Dude, Freerun is so peak. <laughs> it, it is so peak. I think that Freerun is, is the greatest celebration of the fantasy genre we've seen in anime since Maiden Abyss in 20, 2013. Honestly, I cannot think of another fantasy anime that, that really impacted the world as much as Freerun did in a very long time. And I'm not talking about fantasy, just like the, the big banger fight scenes. Like fantasy shonen. I mean, just pure, unadulterated, glorious fantasy. Thank you, Freyren. It's solely because of you that this retired hero could have one final adventure. Truly beautiful anime. And my favorite part of this anime was when Freyren turned to Aura and said, Aura, kill yourself. That was my favorite. <laughs> okay, dude. Freerun opens on the story of an elf girl who takes for granted the time she has with the people around her. Yeah. Decades pass in the blink of an eye, her companions age, and before she has the chance to fully get to know them, they die. they're gone. It's a regretful, poignant tale that shoots straight to your goddamn soul. Dude, that first episode of Freerun, the first two episodes, the first three episodes of Freerun are so good. And then the opening's like... <laughs> The show took a different approach to fantasy adventure while encapsulating everything oh, yeah. that the genre is about. Oh, yeah. There oh, might yeah. not be any demon lord to defeat or world because he was defeated already to save, but instead because it was saved already. You have a journey about appreciating the smaller things in your life. Oh, 100 percent. I, I could just sit here and and baste in free run forever. I feel like free run is one show that I want to just I want it to last forever. I want it to live as long as free run, just a thousand years, thousand years, ten seasons, free run, thousand years. I just want to see Freerun continuing her life and her adventures while all the people around her keep dying. Every season could be 50 years later with the entire cast around her dying and she just keeps moving on, keeps pushing forward. It's a beautiful story and the look inside the, the lives of like the fantasy trope for elves so, so well. Bro, she, you don't understand. She She's out there, her friends die around her and it's only once they die that she really realizes that they were truly friends. Even though they only knew each other for a mere decade. To her, with a lifespan of thousands of years, a decade is nothing, but to them, it's so much. It's such a massive chunk of their life. It's a, it's such a beautiful story, such a beautiful insight into the mind of like the elf character trope. The beautiful things you might have missed if you forgot to look for them. I showed this to a mate and he was like, Free Ren? You mean SideQuest, the anime? And I bloody ate him <laughs> because of how fucking accurate that is. You know? It's true! It's so true! It's like the stupid lore in every video game that no one gives a shit about. It's through those detours you take along the road to your destination that Free Ren absolutely shines. It's the type of show that grips you without ever needing to hit you with any flashy high intensity action scenes to keep your attention and then hit you with these flashy high intensity action scenes. This series didn't need to go hard. Wait, is he, is he not going to mention the kill yourself clip? Because that, that's a that's a wasted opportunity there, bro. In this animation in any way, shape or form, but chooses to do so anyway. This is what it's like to watch a fully polished product. But like Free Ren's own journey, these are not the moments that stick with you. For the world saving adventure she went on, the slice of memories we get are those small moments that really defined the time she spent with her party. And let me, let me show you one of those beautiful moments that defined all that shit. Ara, the one standing before you, is a great mage who's lived for over a thousand. For your... Ara, kill yourself. Oh, so base. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Oh, she did it! She did it! It's those beautiful little moments that makes you feel so, so perfect, so cherished, so loved. It really lets me believe and start appreciating the little things. The little things mean so much more after, after Freerun said, Aura, 
kill yourself. And as she forms new bonds, you start to see those small pieces she begins to pick up from the people around her that slowly become a part of her. This is what every fantasy tale aspires to be. It's shows True. like these that somehow make you nostalgic for an experience you've never had, friends you've never made. But at its heart, it's a gentle reminder to cherish the things in your life that really matter, to make the most of the time with the people you truly value. It's such a beautiful story. Like, it makes me feel. Every time I free run starts making me feel, dude, every single time I'm like, bro, these little things, these little things matter so much. And then I like slap myself because I'm not going to cry like a bitch. I'm going to watch the free run kill yourself clip again. Yes, yes. It has to be Vinland Saga season two, right? Like, I, I cannot fit. I can't imagine he leaves that out. But also, dude, how are you going to skip Blue Eyed Samurai? <laughs> Vinland Saga, it has to be. Called it. Yo, do I know my guck or what? I have no enemies. Nah, I'd win. Aenor, I've killed so many people. I will be. This was probably the slowest burn in the history of anime. Honestly, dude, this Vinland Saga season two, I think was the slowest burn in anime history. I, I think they could have made it a few episodes shorter, to be honest. But dude, dude, what a climax. Reborn. And I will atone for all the lived. That's all we've ever wanted. Something in this world that can give us a reason to keep going. When I was a kid, my father would read me bedtime stories that my childish mind would always be absolutely immersed in. Aww. Accounts of hungry, hungry caterpillars, rainbow fishes, ugly ducklings. Dude. These were the greatest stories I'd ever heard, because yeah, they were. But it would always end off with a message, a seed that got planted in my head that Dude, would- My dad's stories had no messages ever, none of them. They were either designed to just make me feel weird or terrify me. That, that was my dad's stories every single time. Dude, you don't understand. He convinced me that we had a creature living in our boiler room because he never wanted us to go in there, all right? He convinced us that someone we knew died, and he said, oh, don't worry, we're keeping his corpse in our suitcase, and we'll take him along with us wherever we go. And he would say that so I wouldn't rummage in his suitcase. He would, <laughs> he would say, oh, don't touch the suitcase. There's a, uh, you know... Mr. Whoever is, is in that suitcase. Like, I, I know he's dead, but we take him along with us. And I'd believe him. I was four. Okay, what am I going to do? Bro, I love my dad. What a legend. Hopefully sprout into a lesson that would stick with me. And as you grow older, start learning. And you wonder how I ended up so insane. All right? You wonder why I am absolutely insane. Learning new lessons by experience. That explains so much. Yes, yes. Experiencing real life, you forget the effect that stories can have on you. A good story can not only entertain you. It can move you, give you a new perspective, teach you something you never knew you could learn that you can take far beyond the confounds of watching some piece of entertainment. Yeah. That is the power of a great tale. And True. that is everything that Vinland Saga Season 2 Let's encapsulates. Go, I cannot begin to describe the sheer... It is a masterwork in regards to character writing. My, my only complaint is I feel like you can get bored watching it if you're not, like, in for the long haul. I feel like that 24 episode Season 2 could have been 18 episodes. I, it could have. But honestly, dude, that climax at the end, the I Have No Enemies scene, it changed my life. Season 1 was a compelling adventure filled with tragedy, vengeance, and violence. So to anyone coming into this season blind, you probably would have been taken oh, aback. Yeah. The vibe. I was mega shocked. All right, I watched season one and absolutely adored it. Okay, I came into season two expecting, you know, a continuation kind of from season one. I could not believe what I was watching. I had no idea where it was going. It was completely aimless. And dude, that aimlessness is exactly what it was all about. It was if you your whole life is violence and revenge. Once you no longer want to be violent, once your revenge story is con concluded, you have an aimless life. And it's beautiful and it encapsulates that story so well. While well, you shouldn't put all your eggs in a single basket and and put your entire life's goal is doing one thing and once that one thing is over, you're purposeless. It's a beautiful story. It's glorious and I loved it so much even though I could see why people think it's boring. This show feels like 
Like watching a master blacksmith crafting a legendary sword. Silence takes a backseat to a pure methodical character drama. Vengeance. Oh my god, I said put our eggs in one basket and the whole chat spamming the egg emotes. Bro, stop with the egg emotes. I am not Nux Pentius. Stop it. It's been replaced by a saga of redemption and acceptance. Honor, glory, sacrifice, all left by the wayside. And all that remains is people just trying their best to find their place in this merciless world. While most series would cower, at the thought of shifting gears this drastically, it is that strong juxtaposition that gives Villain Saga's message the weight it has, exemplified by possibly the greatest character development we've ever seen in this medium. Thor the, the character development is actually peak in Villain Saga. It, it's actually peak. I, I, it's insane. It is so freaking good. Like, to see Thorfinn who he was in season one and see how it ends with season two, you, you have seen a man's coming of age story the likes of which you've never seen before. Thorfinn's transformation is something that transcends entertainment. A man who starts off as a shell it transcends entertainment. <laughs> you want to be entertained? Well, we have transcended that. We have given you the most boring show on the planet, brother. ...of a human, broken, empty, unworthy of redemption, but through every person he meets, every relationship he forms, he starts to learn to pick up the broken pieces of his former self that slowly but surely... Yo. Fill his soul it's up. Beautiful. As you see him encounter conflict, story. you'll secretly wish for that instant gratification that he'll revert back to his previous self. Honestly, true. I think one of the, the biggest twists for me is when I was watching season two, I was waiting for him to show off how actually he's a badass. To show off how he's actually so much more epic than he's letting on. He's acting as this little farmhand guy, when in actuality he's one of the greatest fighters in, in the country. And he and you're always waiting because people keep picking on him and humiliating him. You're waiting for him to get that, that rush that he can kick their ass, that satisfaction. And you want that, let alone what he wants. And despite waiting and wanting that with my every fiber of my being, he never gives you that satisfaction. He becomes a better person than you are. And it's just such a glorious character development. Savage self. But as you witness this journey of a man fighting so desperately to find peace, who learns that it's okay not just to forgive others, but to forgive himself as well, Aww. it becomes an experience that will linger with you and invites you to find your own solace. What nah, I'd win. Watching Vinland Saga feels like I'm getting read the greatest bedtime story ever told by my dad. It'll grip you with the pure- Not enough horses losing penises for my dad's stories, but like, I hear I hear what you're saying. Here's the tales packed with nothing but raw human emotion that will leave your heart filled to the brim. And by the end of it all, it gives you something. A message. A lesson it earnestly hopes you can take with you. It reminds you that change isn't just something that exists in the boundaries of a fictional story. Yeah. It doesn't come easy. It's a long, hard, unforgiving oh, yeah. road, but you can get there. And it comes with boring times, it comes with humiliation, it comes with holding back who you really are. It comes with being true to yourself, it comes with making mistakes and forgiving those mistakes. Sorry I murdered your village, bro. I have no enemies. Even if every day you only take one small step at a time, we will always find a reason to fight each other. No matter what time period we are in, weapons we can use, or tools we have at our disposal. But no matter how broken you think the world is, there is still meaning in trying to build a better tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I can make a brighter day come. Maybe tomorrow I can be just that little bit kinder. Maybe tomorrow I can become a slightly better version of myself. Yeah. You are capable of letting go of that hatred, even if that hatred is towards yourself. Ah! Gigguk, you made a good shit. Aw, oh, man, dude, I love Gigguk videos. Honestly, bro kills it every time. Dude, for someone like Thorfinn who killed so many... Planting seeds is everything he wants. He's literally creating life instead of destroying it. It's such a such a great story. I am with you, Mr. Guck. I am with you, Guck. Good. All in all, as far as anime in 2023, I guess he's not counting Blue-Eyed Samurai as an anime. Otherwise, I can't imagine he wouldn't include it. It's like actually a masterpiece. I do have to say, I'm glad that my top three, Jujutsu Kaisen, Freerun, and Vinland Saga were also his top three which is also pretty epic, and I am so happy he gave Eminence in Shadow Season 2 the respect it deserved. Also, I will probably be picking up Heavenly Delusion and Apothecary Diaries and Pluto, because they all looked freaking cool. This has been Gigux Anime in 2023. I cannot believe I have been watching this series since 2013, but uh, here we are. Here we are. 
Stay weird, fam. Like, subscribe, and this video was streamed live on kick.com slash See you there. Stay weird, fam.